Hey guys, welcome back to the CARF L39 Skygate build video series. If you guys have any questions, comments, make sure you list them below. I'll do my best to answer them. Also, if you have not subscribed to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. When you hit the subscribe button, also hit the bell and you'll be notified of new videos from this build. Um, also, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and thanks so much for tuning in. All right, guys, so we're going to use the uh, the clunk, the felt clunk that came with the tank. Um, just a little note here. This is another clunk um, <clears throat> that I had from one of my uh, my other kits. So this is the stock uh, Tillotson clunk, and this is the one that I just drilled out. So you can see the difference there. Uh, this is the stock size. That's the, uh, the drilled out size. So I used an eighth, uh, I believe an eighth inch drill bit, put it in my drill press, drilled it out and uh, a lot less restrictive now. Uh, just breathing through it, you can feel the difference. So this is what we're gonna use in the main tank, and that's it. Okay guys, here's the uh, clunk line uh, end, and uh, this is done how the manual suggests it here. Okay guys, so here's our clunk setup. Um, I think I've got everything measured quite well. Uh, I've been fiddling with that uh, vent line a little bit, but uh, just gonna put it in, and hopefully it all works out. All right, guys, so we are all done with the tank. Uh, as far as the assembly goes, the vent is right in the middle here. It worked out perfect. Uh, it's resting against the top. Uh, just a little note for you guys in case you don't know this. Uh, this piece is cut funny, but um, you'd never want to cut your vent line like this because if it's resting against the top of the tank, it's going to seal itself off. So what you want to do is cut the vent line with an angle like that so it uh, always has uh, if it's resting against the top of the tank it's always got uh, an open area it doesn't matter matter how it's sitting so just a little tidbit for you so what I've done is uh, heat sealed one of the uh, ends here this is just my uh, normal way of doing this and then I'll go fill up the sink in the kitchen um, submerse the tank just blow in here with your mouth and um, check and see if there's any leaks. If there's no leaks, we're good to go. Okay guys, working on the main tank setup. Now we did have to change the tanks a little bit. Um, so previously the smoke tank was more in the center and uh, for, uh, a little bit more forward. So had to uh, adjust things just to get enough room for the bends and everything. So the um, this is going to be the first tank, this is the second tank, this is the vent going out to the uh, the air, this is the uh, feed that goes to the smoke tank. So anyways, had to move this back and shift it over a little bit, and this is going to work well. Uh, this tank actually clears the air intakes, which works perfect, but uh, waiting for that to, to the glue to dry there to uh, mess with that. Also working on the tray for the top of the tank. So. Well, I did test the tank um, about an hour ago and it does not leak, so that's all good. And uh, this is the tray for the top of the tank. So we've got enough space there. Um, this main smoke tank sits here. The other one sits off to the side. And then we have the UAT position there. And uh, just cut that in and it works out just beautifully. So this is going to get painted and uh, this step's done. Okay, guys, so we've got the... Uh the plate that mounts onto the tank all complete. Um, the smoke tanks are done. Uh, now these were sliding around yesterday. We just had to wait longer for the, the uh, adhesive to cure. But you can see the offset there. So that'll fit nicely in the, uh, in the fuselage. Um, should work well. And that gets mounted on top of there with the air tank or the bubble trap UAT sitting there. Um, now we did make these plates up and these plates mount or go inside the fuselage okay we did make these plates up they go inside the fuselage and this is what is going to um, have all the equipment mounted onto it so it's going to go somewhere in that area there now um, <clears throat> a couple little notes here this uh, not 
overly sure how this happened or what it is. Um, when we were working on this area last night, particularly on, on this side, I guess the left side of the airframe, there was a couple, um, you won't be able to see them now, but there was a couple little stress cracks in this area. Um, Now, the way this fuselage is designed, and there's probably absolutely nothing wrong with it, but you've got the front former work, and you've got maybe one, two feet before you get into the rear former work. Uh, so there's this big area, um, the whole nose area, that's not uh, supported with any former work. So it's all supported in the actual airframe itself. So when I noticed those cracks yesterday, um, they were the airframe was or the fuselage was a little bit soft in this bottom section so what we did last night um, we basically sanded out from on both sides from here to about here just to get rid of the gloss coat that's on the inside of the fuselage so just a, a light sanding and then we put uh, a couple layers of fiberglass in there with some 30 minute epoxy so we did both sides and uh, it's a lot stronger now um, yesterday there was quite a bit of flexing in this area, particularly on this side. The other side was pretty, uh, was a lot stronger. So anyways, that's more of a preventative thing. Uh, maybe it had an impact on shipping, but it wasn't really noticeable until I kind of got in this area and paid a bunch of attention. Um, so just something to look for, I guess, not necessarily with this airframe, but just airframes in general. Um, you know, when you're building it as the time to look out for those kind of things. So. But uh, that fiberglass is going to add a lot of strength to that area. And then also with these gear plates or the uh, equipment plates, my plan with this is to, um, number one, high saw the bottom uh, risers there, but uh, also high saw this back bead just to, uh, just to maybe, just to add some more strength there. Probably not necessary, but uh, adds a little bit of lateral strength in this area as well too and the only reason i'm doing that is just because those uh, cracks i found in the fuselage um, fiberglass so that is basically it guys um next thing i did here was uh put on the canopy pin um this step is very very straightforward from the inside here you basically thread it on to that uh the piece that's already inserted in the airframe which is very simple um, you put a piece of sheeting over top of here, glue it to the top of the airframe, and then you just loop this around with a little bead which is included uh, in the kit. So when you want to pop the canopy, you just reach back here and just pull the wire, and it's a hidden canopy release. So works really well, very, very straightforward and simple. Um, yeah, so next thing I'm going to do is uh, plumb this tank for the smoke tank. Uh, basically, we just have to plumb the uh, two lines that join together. So the vent line on this one to the second tank intake or pickup line. This is the uh, exit line to the fuselage uh, vent. And this is the pickup line for the smoke pump. So that's the smoke tank. Going to get this mounted, the UAT mounted, and uh, do a little bit of mounting stuff right now. And then um, work on the wiring next. All right, guys. So we got lots done here as far as the... Um, kind of planning and mounting of stuff goes. So I'll go through this with you guys. Um, basically, we've got the air intake on that side, which is going to be the left side, which is going to be pretty much always mounted um, unless you need access to the other side. So that side's staying on. This is the side that we're going to have access to everything. So that's why we've got the panel here. You can see the gap in between the tank and the, um, the air intake. So that's enough to get those air intakes off and on. Um, now the smoke tanks, I've got it mounted with a single zip tie. It's pretty strong. I don't think it's gonna go anywhere. Um, I might come up with a system to hold it in place, maybe something mounted up on the uh, top of the tank here. Um, in the fuselage, just saw a brace that's going across, but I don't think it's really necessary. This is the uh, hidden latch for the K2 
canopy. So basically this tube gets glued to the top of the fuselage. The bead sits right back here above the, uh, the turbine. So if you do need to get the, uh, the canopy off, that's all you're doing is reaching in there and pulling it, which is super simple design. Um, one thing I did change just because the bend on the uh, the tubing here is I took the uh, the mount and I twisted it just a little bit. Uh, still no interference with the canopy going on and off, but this is a nice loop. Um, and then the line is going over here to the uh, the intake of the pump. So. Generally, I'm a fan of putting the on-off valves uh, after the pump. Um, you know, you kind of get a 50% saying before, 50% saying after for lots of different reasons. The manual for this mammoth says put it before the pump, so that's where I'm going to put it. So we've got the line going from the UAT. Nice little loop to the valve. And then from here is going to go down. Um, there's the excess line right here, and we'll have it going um, to the pump sitting right there. Now I'm going to put the turbine stuff fairly close to the back here, so it'll be a short distance on the fuel tubing. Uh, the next one I have to run is from the uh, fuel pickup on the main tank, and this is going to go to the uh, the UAT line, which is right there. So uh, I have to get that mounted. Um, this is the line coming from the turbine wrapped in the snakeskin stuff just where it's going through all the fuselage pieces so that's done uh, the line in between the tanks is finished this again is the uh, the vent that's going to go down to this area and this is the pickup line that's going to go to the smoke pump down here somewhere so the vents are on order from dreamworks um, we have a DreamWorks order showing up hopefully in about a week and that's going to contain the, the final batteries, a couple little doodads, the vent fittings and kind of the last finishing pieces. Um, here's the lines for the, the air brakes. So uh, that's pretty straightforward, color coded. Um, that's about it for tonight. So I think the last things I'm going to do here uh, for the end of this evening is get these pieces glued in our trays and uh, Have to glue a couple little doodads here and there I'm going to also mount this piece to the front of the tank the point of that is this velcro I could just take right now and slide it off So we need something stopping that velcro from sliding forward So we're just going to heist all that in place and uh, that'll take care of the uh, the velcro sliding forward um, need to heist all the um, canopy release these pieces in and that'll uh, that'll be a decent amount of, amount for tonight so that's it for tonight guys uh, I'm gonna get that stuff glued and uh, we'll continue on shortly for you guys it'll be like one second for me it'll be right away or tomorrow <clears throat> alright guys haven't glued the stuff in yet just been working on the wire wiring um, here's the one wire bundle for the uh, rear end and also the right wing. Um, so with this one, I have the wire bundle coming from the front and then the wing splits off to that connector. So we're using a 12-pin um, connector and then a servo, con uh, servo connector there. So it's basically, we've got the aileron, the flap, uh, gear, brake, one of the lights, probably the forward facing light, and then the uh, servo connector is going to be the uh, marker lights on the side of the wings or the outside of the wings because they're a three wire connector. Um, so yeah, that's the connectors. I think they look really, really good. Nice clean wiring. Uh, the other side is going to be a bit more simple because we don't have this wire bundle uh, running from the front of the or the rear of the fuselage to join into it. So it's basically just going to be the bundle going towards the front. So, all right, guys. So pretty much spent the entire day working on wiring. Uh, there's kind of where we're at right now. Now the uh, equipment trays have worked out absolutely awesome. Um, the gear controller is permanently mounted. Uh, the gyro is mounted. Um, the air brake Jetronics valve is mounted. I still have to put uh, little 
line holders on there to hold the two lines up. Uh, they're fine where they are, but just a little bit cleaner where I want to have them. The um, smoke pump is going to be mounted right there. I'm just going to put a zip tie hole, a hole, and put a zip tie around it. Uh, tested the smoke pump because it's not marked. It's an old TAMS unit. Uh, it's not marked which direction uh, was in and out, so I figured that out. And that's where that's going to sit. The um, Jet Central controllers all um, installed and uh, the lines are all hooked up. I did the, the lines, I was going to wait, but I did the lines just to keep things cleaner because I needed to even out all this area. The uh, main um, receiver is not mounted yet and then the Unilite controller is there. Now what I did for the wiring here <clears throat> is I mounted these, um, I forget what they're called. Here they are, they're premium uh, cable holders from DreamWorks. So I mounted the premium cable holders here and there's about 20 spaces in these premium cable holders, but I had way too many wires. So what I did was all the wires that are for the lighting system are actually mounted inside this tube right here, this uh, snakeskin sleeve. And this is gonna be the wiring bundle for the Unilite controller. So I'm gonna put all the ends on here and they're just gonna tuck nicely underneath this little section, come out and plug into the Unilite controller. So I uh, figured that would be nice and clean and uh, then we'll have tons of spaces for dealing with the rest of the wires for the, uh, the gear and the doors and the control surfaces and everything. So um, yeah, happy with the way everything's coming together. Um, pretty much everything is done in this section. Uh, the only thing left to do is run the smoke fill line here. Uh, the on-off valve, the GSU plug-in's done, the uh, on-off uh, for the fuel's done, the lines for the, the turbine are all installed, wrapped in the snakeskin material. Um, turbine line, the main air fill, that's all finished. So very, very happy with uh, the way everything's working out. And uh, yeah, it, uh, it's coming together very, very nicely.